<laughs> Hi friends, Papa Dale here once again. And once again we are embarking on a continuation of our study of Bible nutshells. These are classic teachings of the historic Orthodox Christian Church that have come down to us uh, through history. And today is number 57 out of about 100. And the title of this one is The Gospel Ex is Exclusive or Exclusivity of the Gospel. Not sure what the final title will be yet. But uh, anyway, the purpose of making these videos is to edify the church, to build the church up spiritually, to teach uh, to people who haven't had the time or inclination to really look into it deeply what the basic understandings are, the basic teachings, the basic doctrines of the church. And uh, number two purpose is to leave a legacy of content for people who are left behind after the rapture so that they will have a resource that they can turn to that will teach them about the Bible and the beliefs of the church. Well, who am I? <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. <laughs> I'm Papa Dale. I am a retired pastor, teacher, theologian, uh, chaplain, evangelist, businessman. <laughs> I've done a lot of things in my 50 plus years of uh, serving Christ. And uh, if you want to know more about me, more about that, my educational background, years and years and years of that, and uh, my uh, service history, years and years and years of that, <laughs> you can find the uh, separate video, um, uh, Papa Dale intro video number zero, that is mixed in uh, among my uh, playlist videos. So, this lesson is Bible Nutshell number 57, the exclusivity of the gospel. So here we go. Real truth is always objective. <laughs> Let me say that again, because not everybody agrees with that in our modern world, but it is absolutely so. Real truth is always objective. How we wish to apply truth to our personal experience can be subjective, but civilization cannot be built upon the shifting sands of subjectivity. Without objective truth, mutual understanding cannot exist and communication ceases. This is so for both physical and metaphysical realities. Excuse me. <clears throat> the culture we live in says, quote, You worship God your way. I'll worship him my way. It's all the same, right? Nope. <laughs> Not according to the Bible. True worship requires coming to God on his terms. Quote, By faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain. Hebrews 11.4 Cain wanted to worship Yahweh his own way and was rebuked. He wanted to worship God on his own terms. At the heart of every false religion is the notion that man can come to God by any means he chooses. Finding God within, meditating, doing good deeds, believing in, in something, anything, and so on. But scripture says, quote, there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved, end quote, Acts 4.12. That name is Jesus Christ, and we come to him by confessing and repenting of our sin, trusting in his vicarious, substitutionary, atoning death on the cross, 
and affirming his bodily resurrection from the grave. According to Romans 10, 9 through 10, there is no other way to God. The faith of Yahweh, the Creator, is exclusive. It's like, it's got to be Yahweh or the highway. <laughs> That's true, though. Got to be Yahweh or the highway. Centuries before Christ's death, God provided a means of worship and sacrifice. Genesis chapter 4, 3 through 5 says, quote, It came about in the course of time that Cain brought an offering to the Lord of the fruit of the ground. And Abel, on his part, also brought of the firstlings of his flock and their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and for his offering. But for Cain and for his offering, he had no regard. Apparently, God had designated a special time for sacrificing because, quote, in the course of time, end quote, verse 3, literally means, quote, at the end of days, end quote, at the end of a certain period of time. Or the Bible uses the word in Hebrew, moedim, appointed times. Additionally, Yahweh initiated a particular pattern for worship and sacrifices. Otherwise, Cain and Abel would have known nothing about how it was to be done. God required a blood offering for sin. Abel came in faith, and by offering a blood sacrifice, he acknowledged his sin, made the appropriate sacrifice. His offering was better than Cain's, because Gain neglected the prescribed sacrifice, thereby demonstrating his unwillingness to submit to Yahweh and deal with his sin. He wanted it his own way, and so do many of you. But it's got to be Yahweh. Pardon me. <coughs> there was nothing intrinsically wrong with Cain's offering grain, fruit, or vegetable offerings were later included in the Mosaic Covenant, but the sin offering had to come first. Like so many today, Cain wrongly assumed that he could approach God on his own terms. In doing so, he became the father of all false religions, and his name became synonymous with rebellion and apostasy. Jude 11. Have you ever tried to come to God on your own terms? I have. It doesn't work. It's not efficacious. When Yahweh gave the law to Moses, the very first commandment was, quote, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Exodus 23. And the second was, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything. Exodus 24. It had to be God's way. As God separated Israel from the surrounding pagan cultures, he, bro he prohibited the worship of false gods under the penalty of death. Exodus 22.20. 20. This was the underlying rationale for the total genocide of the inhabitants of Canaan and the prohibition against marriage with pagan worshiping women. Intermarriage always leads to the abomination of syncretic faith. Also, those pagan religions involved child sacrifice and torture and, and killing humans before their god and, and so forth. It also included orgiastic sexual activities and so forth just totally immoral and inhuman activities. Exclusivity of the faith of Yahweh began with Cain and Abel and progressed unchanging in that requirement for centuries up to and including today. Skip forward from Cain and Abel to the life of Christ. Jesus made many exclusive statements, quote, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. 
Matthew 7, 13. Quote, And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone who seeth the Son and believeth in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up on the last day. End quote. John 6, 40. Quote, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14.6 The Apostle Peter said, quote, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Acts 4.12 the Apostle Paul said, trying to mix faith in Christ, along with some other kind of faith, means the means of salvation is spoiled. By doing that, mixing it up, you've spoiled the whole. Quote, you who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. Galatians 5.4. Quote, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. This is the basis of the doctrine that salvation is by solo gratia, sola fide, solo Christo, by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. If our heart were trusting in Christ, if, excuse me, let's start over. If in our heart we are trusting in Christ plus something else for our salvation, our faith is in jeopardy. That we were more good than bad in our life, better than most other people, were a church member, gave money to the church, were baptized, well, those things are all admirable. None of that counts for righteousness. God's standard is perfection. Are you perfect? Can you do anything to make yourself perfect? Yahweh's method for becoming perfect is through faith alone, trusting alone in the substitutionary sacrifice that Christ made by dying in our place. The faith of Jesus Christ is exclusive. The gospel is exclusive. The gospel plus something else ruins the gospel. It ruins the gospel. It ruins your faith in Christ for salvation. You have to trust in Christ alone. All those other things, all the good things you can do, being a good person, being a good citizen, paying your taxes, paying your tithes, all of those things are admirable things to do. But they are not salvific. They do not make a person righteousness. After we're saved, then those things take on more importance because those things are are the means by which we work out our salvation, or rather, our sanctification, by our works, by our deeds. But that's a different Bible nutshell. <laughs> so for today, that's our Bible nutshell number 57. The gospel is exclusive. At the bottom of the video, you're going to find a comment section. Leave your comments prayer requests and questions there. Also, you'll find a link to my Facebook page, Dale Warren at Facebook, and you can leave your comments, questions, or prayer requests there. You'll also find a link that'll take you to the lesson notes, so you can go through the lesson notes more slowly and find the scripture verses and look them up. Now, the next video, last video, I forgot to tell you what the next video was. I wrote it down this time. The next video is video number 58. Jesus, Deity and Humanity. Jesus, Deity and Humanity. So, this is Papa Dale, signing off for now. 
And until that next video, I'm praying that you will be well and be blessed. Ha, 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 ha.